that's in you. And because in the scripture, the word says to Timothy, I see the same that was in your mother and your grandmother, Lois. And in the natural, you were born on your great-grandmother Lois's birthday today. And the Lord said that kindness, he sees your heart. So I heard laugh, my child, laugh. Laugh for the surprises and the gifts that are being sent your way. There is joy, laughter, and peace in the Holy Ghost. And the future for you and the plans are so great, it is yet for the tongue to be able to tell. So receive your birthday present from the Almighty today. While you were receiving that word and hearing that word, I saw your future. I saw you in the future. And you were still young. And I saw you in the future with your child, your baby. He was a pretty fat-faced baby. <laughs> and it was had very short hair at that time. And you were happy and you were young and it was happy. So the future's bright and a family is ahead of you. So do not give in to anything else but the destiny God has for you. For your future is as bright as God can make it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It is the time. I look down at this, this banner, and the Lord spoke to me. He said, it is the time of the eagle and the lion. This is that time. For the time of the ox is not yet seen. And the time of the man will be seen when the return. But the time of the eagle and the lion is the time for you. It's the time you were born into. For God says, I have a ground game and an air game. I have ground forces and an air force. The eyes of the eagle and the teeth of a lion. For the lion is running across the land. You know of whom I speak. And it's running across the land, says the Lord. The lion of Judah. And the pads of his feet shake the earth. And it shakes men out of positions. And motivates others to go into position. But the eagle spots the danger coming from miles and miles away. For hear the word of the Lord, says the Lord, I'm going to give you the eyes of an eagle. And I'm going to give you the eyes of the eagle. And I will retain the teeth of the lion. And I will defend you. But look far ahead of you into your destinies and into your future. Some of you thought your life was over. Some of you thought you only had three years left. But the Lord said, nay, but I'm here to grant you 15, not just three more. If you will take it, but that makes me old. That makes me old, Lord. Yes, but this is what you asked for when you were young. So it is the time of the eagle and the lion. It's the time that entities are shaken loose. 
It's the time that wicked men and tyrants fall on their face. It's time that demons are unseated all over the world. It is time for foolish mouths that mock the power of God to be silent. It is time, says the Lord, for you to be silent in the presence of greatness. The greatness he speaks of is himself. For he is moving through the earth. And petty mouths speak the destruction of everything he's trying to do. Hush and be still, says the Lord. For you're entering a time you've never seen. The world is about to make a step it's never seen. And I am depending upon you to protect the little ones. I am pretending, I am depending on you to quit pretending that a man is a girl and a girl is a man. Quit pretending and living in fantasy land and protect my heritage for this is the time leaders are about to step into a time they didn't even know existed my presence says the Lord will fill this earth I promised Moses so I will do. My glory will fill the earth. Hallelujah. Watch for the sea to bubble. Watch for the sea to bubble. The Lord says, deal with your rebellion. Deal with it. For you are being looked at as a heathen witch. Deal with rebellion. I've placed you with a team. I've placed you with groups. I've placed you where you're strong. But rebellion says, I hear God as well as anyone, not knowing you're deaf as a stone. For the God you hear is a stone and an idol carved in it. Quit pretending. Recognize the glory and get in it. Hallelujah. It's the time of the eagle and the lion. It's the time when men's lives are in jeopardy. It's the time of the eagle and the lion. It's the time for men to be free. Should you be in bondage? Should men all over the world succumb to demonic bondage and be placed on the ground where they have to grovel in the dirt? Nay, says the Lord. I made you from the dirt and raised you up above the dirt. Not for your head to be pushed back in it. I need people, says the Lord, who will listen and listen and not run like hyenas all over the land. Listen, make your stand, for I'm about to bring my banner through the earth and all of my troops will gather around me. The time of the lion and the eagle, the eagle and the lion. Hallelujah. Stand for righteousness. Hear it? Distant thunder. Hear it? A 
the sound of glitches breaking through from another world. UFOs have been given to broader definitions, says the Lord. My people are played for fools. They follow conspiracy down rabbit holes of UFOs. They're given to broader definitions, says the Lord. They're only called unidentified. Not green men from planets of cheese. You are looking at a deception. And you are looking at a deception that will fool the elite. When I speak of elite, I speak of the elect. Do not give your mind to such trash. For men have contacted demons and contacted a dark world to learn how to build such things. They are in contact now, living in an illusion. Only my written word will clear your vision. Look to it, for I will not change it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's the time of the eagle and the lion. It's the time of the eagle and the lion. It's the time of the eagle and the lion. Let him roar, let him roar, let him roar. Let the lion roar. Let the lion roar. Let the lion roar. Let the lion roar. Come on, shout it out. Let the lion roar. Let the lion roar. Let the lion. Lift our hands now and give our God praise. Come on, you say, oh, brother, this, you just, this always just goes so long and goes somewhere. Yes, it goes long, but it goes long into a place that will keep you from the longest place you've ever known, hell. Hell is longer than anything you've ever known. So right now, make Jesus Christ the Lord of your life. Go ahead and ask him, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Be my Lord and personal Savior. I believe you rose from the dead. I believe you died for me and God raised you from the dead. And I confess with my mouth that you are my Lord and personal Savior. Hallelujah. Go ahead and do that now. Come on.
Just stay with us. I heard the Lord say, today's a, a prophetic day. It's a very prophetic day. Yes. 
And this morning, the Lord told me, he said, he began to speak to me, and, and I just sat down. And I started writing. I hadn't shared this with anybody. And I said, Lord, tell me when to, when to share it, when to tell it. And this is the word of the Lord this morning. It said, there is a time and a place. And I heard, but where and when, says the prophet. I will show you, says the Lord. But as a winter storm with driving snow, a blizzard, yes. But those who can't see will not see. And those who refuse to hear will not. For a little while, and yet a while, I will move greatly through my church. Then the door will shut. The darkness will come, and people will cry, and grow weary, for their way has escaped them. Work while it is day, and you will have an abundance of souls for your labor. Be slack and your lamps will be corroded with rust. Keep your wells filled with pure water, lest the time come to, to water the crops and your wells are dry. Heed the word of the Lord, for the time of entertaining angels unaware are upon you. This is a time I think we just need to get right in the word right here and and we can do turn it around brother turn it around brother. if if thank you if you if you will stay with it today things are going to be different after today now, people say things like that, and, and it's, you know, it's like, it's like Jesus said on the chosen, you know, any, it's easy to say anything, no. But God always shows up with power. He always shows up to confirm what's being said. The time, I need to get my Bible too, Austin. The time that we live in is unlike a time that anyone's ever known except the prophets of old saw it. They saw it, and, um, but they saw it from a distance. Hallelujah. But you know what they did? They went into the future to see it for us because they knew they wouldn't be here the Lord knew that so he sent them into the future to see it for us so that we would know how to fight hallelujah well that's not people don't people hear the word fight and they just you know it just don't seem like like that that rings real well <laughs> but I want you to, to listen and uh we're talking about right now spiritual fight. And so people say, well, that made me feel a little better. <laughs> but that's where we fight is in the spirit. You have to remember we fight in the spirit. We don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers, rulers of the darkness of this world, spiritual wickedness in high places. We fight those four Entities, we fight in those four realms, and um, you know, I'm just I, I, we don't, I, I know I probably don't have time to do all of this, but I was really led to talk to you about some of it today. Now, God does not want well, Lord, give us eyes to see and ears to hear that we can learn your word together as a family and I give you praise and honor 
and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, God does not want to turn this world over to the warped mind of Satan. Now, you know, somehow or another we get this idea and people say, well, it's the will of God. It's the will of God. God don't want to turn this world over to the warped mind of Satan. As men get more wicked, the real depth of Satan's depravity and contempt for the human race becomes more and more apparent. I need to say that again. As men get more wicked, the real depth of Satan's depravity and contempt for the human race becomes more and more apparent. Now, Psalm 8, let's put that on the screen and we'll look at that. There's, there's more scripture I would like to, to find here, but I, it was prepared so quickly that it, you know, Psalm 8. Now watch this. O Lord, our Lord, how excellent is thy name in all the earth, who has set thy glory above the heavens. Out of the mouth of babes and sucklings hast thou ordained strength because of thine enemies, that thou mightest still the enemy and the avenger. Now, we learn that children, by the time they can suck the breast, they can stop the enemy and the avenger. Something comes out of their mouth that is powerful enough to stop the enemy and stop a bad harvest. A child, you see, out of the mouth of babes and sucklings, by the time they can make a sound, even when they're just old enough to nurse, they can, they, there's something in them that can stop the enemy and stop the avenger. So Satan just decides in his warped mind to, the answer is simple, just kill the unborn. That's his thoughts. Just kill the unborn, just, just kill them. That's what he's, and that's, that's his grand solution. He decides in his warped mind, just kill the unborn. His depraved mind just says, do this with no remorse. Why? Number one, he's a fallen being. And number two, he has no blood, so he has no, no thought for blood. And he has contempt for blood. That's why in every satanic ritual they shed blood. They want to bleed something to death. They want to do all of this. This is why, because he's contempt, he has contempt for it because he wants to be a man so much, but he can never be. Now, Satan's mind is being merged with warped men. You can tell when this happens, it's very recognizable. They'll begin to show their support for abortion. It's the first thing they usually do. They show their support for abortion, the killing of children. Then every decision begins to be just as warped as that one. But that one is a champion of the kingdom of hell. Hallelujah. Then every other decision begins to be just as warped. Anyone who claims to be a Christian that supports the killing of the unborn is fooling themselves. Their mind is being controlled by the most warped being that has ever existed. When the killing of the unborn finally clears in the human thinking, then every part of the solical realm, your mind, will, and your emotions has come into agreement that it is okay to kill the unborn. After this, every decision of death is easy to make, no matter how depraved it is. Once a civilization can do this, then the mutilization of children's genitals, the changing of genders, the next thing you know, men will fight for the right to change the sex of their little children. 
Because you've now become depraved. And you actually have become perverted until you get off on things like that. Oh, that sounds too crude, Brother Robin. You're talking really crude. Yeah, it's in a crude world right now. Men begin to dress like women. They go into women's bathrooms with them. Perversion is now taken over. Till I watched Nancy Pelosi stand up in front of, the, of Congress and smile, she was really giddy and licked her lips and smiled as she hit the gavel because they passed a bill to kill children in late terms. What made her so? And then she said, it's for the children later. When you look at a man that is obviously a man, dressed as a woman, walking around with women's underwear and smiling, walking down the street, when you see genetically altered breasts on a man topless at the White House, bouncing around screaming we're topless at the White House, you can look at this and know something is terribly wrong. I didn't come to church for this. Well, then why did you come? Then why did you come to church at all? So that we'd sing three songs and a poem? And you could get out by 12 to go eat at Shoney's? Shoney's down here closed. It's not eternal. <laughs> it's the truth, isn't it? It's not eternal. Wickedness is not a normal thing. It is a result of Adam's sin. When Adam fell, he knew good and evil. When you see such wickedness, as we've talked about here, you know there are dark spirits involved. It's not just a natural thought of a man. It is spirits influencing and merging what they are with the 50% darkened in a man's mind. Yep, yep, yep. Well, you're reading a lot today. I know. I know. They're merging them themselves. They are merging what they are with the 50% that's dead. Adam became half dead, knowing good and evil. So they're merging with the 50% that's dead that fallen man now knows. The wickedness and the depravity you see in the earth is not just organically happening. It is being driven by spirits. And most spirits have to be given control. I'm going somewhere very big today. This is why I'm reading a lot. Well, I don't know. I ain't why I'm reading a lot. I'm reading a lot because the Lord said to. And, 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 I'm, and, it's, and he wants you to hear every word. Hallelujah. Now listen to this. The wickedness and the depravity you now see in the earth is not just organically happening. It is being driven by spirits. And most spirits have to be given control. Fallen wicked men have noticed the dark power of deception over the years. And as some of them begin to notice that there was a power or a spirit behind it, they begin to try and find out how to contact that world. And that is known as the occult. Nimrod knew it. Those pagan people and, th and, and kings knew it. Nero knew it. Rome knew it. If they didn't know it, then why was Rome filled with so many idols and so many gods? They knew it. They learned over the years there's a power beyond what they can see. And they wanted that. Why did all the heathen kings have idols? They called deities. And they named them. They offered sacrifice to them. Hitler knew it and wanted the Holy Grail. 
and the Ark of the Covenant and so forth. Governments have learned a long time ago that they can employ wicked spirits to help them do very wicked things in order to feed their greed. And still, stealing, killing, and destroying is Satan's thing, St. John 10.10. 10. I'm trying to make a point today that governments over from the history of governments recognize there's a spirit world. They all know it's true. One, one head of state in another country, I heard him say it with my own ears. He said, I'm calling on the rest of the world to, un, to uh, uh, show and reveal their UFO technology. He said that. He said, the only reason you don't is because of religion. Now, he said that. What could he possibly be talking about? In 2008, when Barack Obama ran for president of the United States, they built him a platform that was a replica of the throne of Satan in Berlin. They put it in Mile High Stadium in Colorado on Invesco Field. They put it on the 50-yard line. And there on a replica of the throne of Satan, and by the way, Hitler had one also in Nuremberg that he spoke from where he uttered the words final solution. Go back to the throne of Satan that is in Berlin. There it is. Can you see it? Now look at the one that was built for Obama to speak from. And there it is. It'll almost superimpose over each other. Hitler had Albert Speer build him one just like it when he got ready to take over the world. Why, why would they want the throne of Satan? Oh, it's just a coincidence. Really? See, every generation says, we're the modern generation. Every one of them. Oh, we're the modern generation. That just means you're stupider than the one before you. That's all. It just means that because, but one thing about governments is governments never lose sight of the spirit world. They do not. Why do you think Hillary Clinton held a seance in the White House where she channeled the spirit of Eleanor Roosevelt? Why would she call the two most powerful witches in the world into that end of the White House? She don't believe in that's just something just to do it a Halloween gag. Why would they build, why would Hitler want Albert Speer to go to the, to the resurrected throne of Pergamon, the seat of Satan mentioned in Revelation, where they uh, uh, unearthed it, moved it to Berlin, and when they moved it to Berlin, right about the time they assembled the pieces and got them there, a man named Hitler was born in Austria, and then right about that time, Germany became a nation, and then the next thing, World War I broke out, and all the bloodshed, like blood offerings, began to go all over the world, and then right after that, they assembled the throne of Satan, moved it into Berlin, and then Hitler rises to power. And he said, I need something to speak to the people from. So Albert Sphere, the architect, went to see the throne of Satan that you were looking at, went to see it, designed Hitler's platform with it. And then Hitler stood on the throne of Satan and uttered the words, final solution to kill all the Jews. And Hitler wanted the Ark of the Covenant. And that movies you see made about it was based on true. He wanted that piece of furniture. He wanted the cup that Jesus drank from or that he gave to his men. He didn't drink it till he drank it new. Now, there on that high place on Invesco Field, Mile High Stadium, a high place, the throne of Satan was erected. Not long after, there Obama accepted the nomination. 
Not long after he became president, and in 2010, we see Barack Obama as Shiva, the Hindu god of destruction on the cover of Newsweek magazine. Look at that. Oh, isn't that something? You see him as Shiva on the cover of Newsweek magazine. Coincidence? However, instead of four arms, he has six and in his hands, he held money, military, medical, housing, which represents families, a dove, peace, and the globe. The caption read, God of all things, or GOAT, G-O-A-T. And the front cover read, and you can see it back there, just barely on the bottom, it reads, the presidency may be too much for one person to handle. This seemed to be a dark prophecy of what was coming. It would involve the whole world, every way of life, every walk of life. It would prove to be too much for one man, indicating that we would have to go to some other way of life. And it would affect our money, military, medical, peace, housing, and somehow Shiva would be involved, and Obama would be involved, and a goat man would be involved. Somehow all of this would result in controlling all the world, a result or result in a new world order. Well, you're stretching, Brother Robin. I don't think so. We see the organization CERN. CERN, the big Hadrian, LHC, the big large Hadrian Collider in Switzerland. We see the organization CERN sitting on the temple of Apollo, trying to open a portal to another world. But strangely enough, on their grounds is the Hindu god of destruction, Shiva. We see this same Hindu deity when the WHO met with the Chinese in 2000, I forget what, when it was before the pandemic, that the same false god was sitting on the table where they met. There it is at CERN. There they are meeting. Oh, just, just something to do. This was from, I think this appeared in Israel 365 News. It says, photo surfaces of WHO chief meeting Chinese officials with Shiva, Hindu god of destruction. Then we see the Arch of Baal begin to show up over and over again. Had to be on purpose. There's one, one was unveiled in London. If we have that, show that. You can see them as they took the plastic off of it. And it was unveiled in London. There's Boris Johnson down there in the corner dedicating the Arch of Baal. Woo! Celebrate the Arch of Baal where they march babies up through that arch right there up to the temple of, of Baal and offered them in sacrifice to the devil. Suddenly they show that up in London. One video of that showed two dark entities fly through it. Then we see when Brett Kavanaugh was, was being grilled in that circus he was in, suddenly the Arch of Baal shows up in the park across the street and centers the Capitol right there uh, through it because Brett Kavanaugh's vote could end abortion. So they bring this. It's a 3D printed copy of it. Then there was one in New York. Wow. In New York, it shows up being dedicated. The Palmyra Arch, a Roman arch destroyed by ISIS, goes on display at City Hall in 2016 when Hillary Clinton started running for president. Wow. She's known as the champion of abortion. Revelation tells of a fallen angel given the key to open the bottomless pit. When it is opened, there are very strange-looking creatures who come out of it and hurt men. 
And the scripture says they have a king over them known as Apollyon. And CERN is built on the temple of Apollo. We see the Gothard tunnel opened with a ceremony that mimicked the ceremony at the temple of Pan in Caesarea Philippi in Israel. The Gothard tunnel, we call them tunnels. That's not what it says. They call them portals. And the temple of, of Pan, you may not know what that is. But when you go to Caesarea Philippi in Israel, you go up to the foot of Mount Hermon or Mount Hermon. And at the bottom of it is where the Jordan River begins. And there was the temple of Pan. It's eight miles above the Galilee, and Jesus took his men there in Matthew 16, 13. Put that on the screen. We'll look at that, Matthew 16, uh, and we'll start in verse 13. I'm just out of room up here. Let me see. I can just... Hallelujah. Come on, y'all. Y'all with me? Yes. yes. Praise God. Now, Matthew 16 Verse 13, when Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Whom do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? And you know that was a pretty odd place for those Jewish men to be because there's only one thing going on in, in Caesarea Philippi, and it is the ceremony of Pan, the pagan god. They also had a temple there to the government, Caesar. And they also had, uh, Baal was also in the area. Of there. So when Jesus went up there, they're probably wondering, what are we doing up here at this pagan temple? But something real unique happened at that pagan temple. When you go up to it and you start to go up the steps to look at it, the first thing you see on the left, if I'm walking this way, I would see on the left is a cave. This cave was known as the gates of hell. It was known the gates of Hades or the portal into hell. It used to be full of water. And the Jordan begins at the foot of that mountain. Then over to the right of it, if you're walking this way, you know, I'm just, well, if I'm looking at you, it'd be this way. Over to the right of it, then you start to see this, the, the Pan shrine. Pan is a goat man. He's part goat, part man. And he's, so he's, you see his shrine, and then you see these little niches in the cliffs where these nymphs sit, which was supposed to be Pan's god women. And what happened? And then there was a shrine to Caesar because they believed government was a god. They believed he was a god. So when you walked up to it, what the, the way the ceremony would play out was this. They had trained dancing goats that would dance. They'd bring out a herd of goats and they would begin to dance. You would buy a goat and you would offer it in sacrifice to Pan. And when the goat was offered, you'd go up to the cave full of water, the gates of hell, because they believed Pan went through that portal into the Hades in the wintertime and hibernated. Would go down there with other uh, with whatever deities was with him, and he would go down in there, and he would have to be aroused, and that's a real key word. He'd have to be aroused in the spring to come back out and, and, and fertilize all the crops because he was a fertility god. So they, they, they would take the goat, throw it in the cave full of water. If the goat sank to the bottom, Pan accepted it. If it floated back to the top, he didn't accept it, and then a child would have to be offered. Probably, I guess their child, someone said. said their child would have to be offered. Then, after that, the high priest and priestess would come out. They would get all the goats to mate in front of everybody. They have to arouse Pan. So they would get all the goats to mate, because all occultism, all Satanism, all, it's all unclean and filthy. Yeah. 
He's, he's called the Lord of the dung hill for not for no reason at all. The Lord of the flies. You would say the Lord of the maggot. The scripture refers to him as a worm. And so he's, he would go in there, then they'd get the goats to mate. And then while the goats were doing that, then the high priest and priestess would come out and do the same thing. Then they would join in with the goats. Then the people would all join in. And there was one big, they called it pandemonium would start. Because pan was coming up out of the gate. Let's see. All this would begin. And so Jesus takes his men there. They had a, they had a shelf there, and you can, it's called the Rock of the Gods. So now listen, and you'll understand exactly what he's saying, but then I want to show you a deep hidden prophecy that I've never heard anybody else say. When Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Whom do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? And they said, Some say thou art John the Baptist, some Elias, and, and others Jeremiah, and are one of the prophets. He saith unto them, But whom say ye that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon, son of Jonah, bar Jonah, for flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. And I say unto thee, thou, that thou art Peter, or Petros, a fragment of a rock. He said, what you just heard made you solid. It made you a piece of the big rock. And he said, upon this rock, Petra, Gibraltar of a boulder that I'm the Christ I'll build my church referring to the rock of the gods he said it's this rock I'm going to build it on now watch then he says this and the gates of hell will not prevail against the church now you know what he's referring to. He they all knew what that cave was. The gates of hell. And he said the gates of hell won't prevail against the church. But here's the prophecy. The church wasn't in existence yet. The church wasn't even here. Nobody had ever been born again. You can't get born again. How do you get born again? You believe in your heart God raised Jesus from the dead. You confess with your mouth that he's your Lord and you'll be saved. Well, you can't do that if he's never died yet. So he's prophesying the church. One day, he said, the church will be on the earth and those gates will be opened again and the church will have to do battle against that thing, whatever comes up out of that portal. The church will have to fight against that. It'll be in the time of the church and he was prophesying all those, he was prophesying the future into this time. How many of you see the prophecy? Well, they, when they dedicated the rail tunnel, the rail portal, the deepest ever, the Gothard Tunnel in Switzerland, they began the ceremony underground. And you can see it. Heads of states were there. There were four clergymen from the, from, uh, the Catholic Church, the Jewish Church, uh, the Jewish uh, uh, rabbi. There was a, a, a Protestant minister, and there was a Muslim Imam, all came because there were nine people died building it. So they did a ceremony commemorating their deaths. So there was sacrifice involved. Then underground, this is the way it, it's, uh, this is the way it started. I watched it. This is the way it starts. They're deep underground. 
Heads of state are sitting there with their clean cut look and their ties and their dresses and they're all put together and everything. And so they're going to dedicate this tunnel to, to get politicians and important people from one place to the other at, at a real quick speed. So this is the way they dedicate it. Here comes a wagon.